Good evening and welcome to our prayer meeting tonight here at Faith Bible Church of San Francisco. We welcome you today, um, January 19th. And um, we will be singing a hymn, Come Thou, Come Thou Found of Every Blessing. And um, looking it up from uh, Romans 8, verse 38 to 39. Verse 38. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is our also prayer for the year that to always be reminded that nothing can separate us from the love of God. His love will always be there for us in spite of our, our sinfulness, our, when we, even if we wa wander away. See, the, the part of the hymn, prone to wander, Lord, I feel it, prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, O oh, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. And even when we wander, the Lord will always be there to take us in. So let's sing with us. Uh, Come thou fount of every blessing. Father, here's our hearts. Please take it and seal it so that no, nothing else can separate us from you and that we will not wander.
Okay, am I ready now? Am I live? Can you hear me? Okay, we'll be starting our um, meditation for tonight. And I praise the Lord for this time that uh, another day, another year that has given to us to serve Him in, uh, in a little way. Because this is uh, just, uh, uh, let's say, not a big deal. We just uh, gave the meditation. It's not like a pastor's or uh, giving a big sermon in a service. Uh, but uh, our meditation for tonight is found, it will be in two verses. And I, I entitled it our, our Food for the Year. Since it's, uh, it's still, uh, we're still on the uh, middle of January. And our verse will be first will be found in the book of Romans 15, verse 4. Romans 15, verse 4, which says, For everything that was written in the past, was written to teach us so that through endurance and encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. Okay, let's look to the Lord in prayer before we go on with our meditation. Dear God, Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this time that uh, we can uh, study and look into your word, your words that give us uh, assurance of your goodness, your faithfulness, and your love that is given to us. Thank you, Father God, for the help. It's one that I pray today that uh, also give me the uh, word that I have to say that uh, may be a blessing to me and blessing to others. I praise you, O oh God. May you be praised, be magnified in this time we give that your word. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Okay. Uh, Romans 15, 4. For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us. So that through endurance and the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. Well, it is a good thing that we have uh, the scriptures that was written for us by the Lord using a uh, man and woman to express to tell us what happened in the past how the apostles the prophets and all those uh, people that God has used that uh, we may uh, experience his love that we can uh, share it as well, for they have shared, done their part, and it is our part right now to do it, to give uh, his words to others, especially for those who are unbelievers. And as I say, let's look at the past, as written in the word, in the word of God. And the last time I spoke is... Uh, is about Apostle Paul, who is an unbeliever of Christ. Yet, he believes in God. He is a con from being unbeliever to being converted to be a believer, believer of Christ. God showed him the true way. And he became a true servant and a follower of Christ. Now we look who the prophet Jeremiah was. Apostle Jeremiah, as we call, Is uh, let's uh, compare first. 
Apostle Paul and Prophet Jeremiah have been called by the Lord in two different ways. Apostle Paul is an unbeliever converted to Christianity by God's calling. He was persecuted but remained faithful despite all trials physically and spiritually. While Prophet Jeremiah is a believer called by God to serve him. Like Apostle Paul, he endured all trials and persecutions. It is not easy to serve the Lord. Like our text says, endurance to face all trials and, uh, and in all circumstances. I said, so that through endurance and encouragement of the Spirit, we might have hope. Like Apostle Paul and Prophet Jeremiah, they endured and faced all trials and, and persecution. But in, but in all these things, in all those trials and hardship, physically and spiritually, they continue to give thanks to the Lord. Like what it says in First Thessalonians 5 and 10, 18. But in anything, in all circumstances, we have to give thanks to the Lord. In all troubles and, and hardship, the Lord is still there to give us strength. Because that was his promise to us. Even Apostle Paul experienced hardship. He was, though in all those hardship, he was rejoicing. Even though he was poor in material things, he made many rich by his ministry. Let's look at Second Corinthians 6, verses 1 to 10. As, as Apostle Paul is facing all trials, he says, 2 Corinthians 6, verses 1 to 10, it says, As God's fellow workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. For he says, In time of my favor, I heard you. And in the day of salvation, I help you. See, the Lord is always there for us. All we just have to do is believe in Him, trust Him with all our, our life. Whatever we're doing, trust Him, for He is a great helper. I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day, day of salvation. We put no stumbling block in anyone's path, so that our ministry will not be discredited. Rather, as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way. In great endurance, in troubles, hardship, and distress. Says everything that he has suffered. Beatings, imprisonments, riots, hard works, sleepless nights, and hunger. In purity, understanding, patience, and kindness in the Holy Spirit. And in sincere love, we do everything with love, and with patience, to the help of the Holy Spirit. And the way they talk, a truthful speech, and in the power of God, every voice that come out of His mouth is from the power of God. With the weapons of righteousness in the right hand and in the left, through glory and dishonor. Bad report and good report. Known yet regarded as unknown. Dying yet we live on. See, they have received all those trials, even in the close death. Close, um, yet they still live because God is with them. Christ is not abandoning them. They gave him the hope. The great hope. And then says, sorrowful yet always rejoicing. Poor yet 
making many rich, having nothing and yet possess everything. You can see in the verse 10, poor yet many rich, have, having nothing and yet possessing everything. If you look, if you understand what it means, it says, he's giving everything. He doesn't need all the money in the world that he can give, but the riches of sharing the gospel to many. The riches, the salvation is being spread to many people. That is his joy. And that should be our joy as well, Christians. And that is the experience of Apostle Paul. Yet we look we look at who is Jeremiah the prophet. After we have discussed so many things about Apostle Paul. Let's see who is Jeremiah the prophet. First, he is the son of Hilkiah, a Benjamite. Benjamite, the smallest of the tribe of Israel. Where King Saul, Judge uh, Jehu, the judge, and even Apostle Paul and Jeremiah, they all came from the tribe of Benjamite. What's so special about the tribe? They said, but I look at it, they are all left-handed people. It doesn't mean that only left-handed people are uh, uh, blessed. They said there that they are right-handed because they are warriors. I don't know how it happened, but all of them said, and they are good warriors. So Jeremiah, he was only 20, 20 years old when he was called by the Lord. He was not he was not the youngest. I know as far as I know. I know Daniel's younger. But uh, he was called by the Lord. And Jeremiah, as most of us know, that he is called the weeping prophet. It says in verse Jeremiah 9, it says, Jeremiah. It says um, 9, uh, 1b, it says, I would weep day and night for the slain of my people. And 13, Jeremiah 13, 13, 17 says, But if you do not listen, I will weep in secret because of your pride. My eyes will weep bitterly, overflowing with tears, because the Lord's flock will be taken captive. He would weep day and night because his people, the Israelites, will be, become captive and some of them will be taken to uh, Babylon and some other places. And if the, this people doesn't listen to him, he will be weeping. He will be sad. It will be an overflowing of the tears because they will be taken captive. Why? Because of their sins. They were taken captive because of their sins, their transgressions. They go to different gods. The immorality that is prevailing during that time. That's why he was called the weeping prophet. 
He was so sad because the people of God will be taken captive. He is not only called the weeping prophet. He is the prophet of loneliness. May kalungkutan sa kanyang buhay. Bakit po? Tignan po natin sa Jeremiah 16, 1 to 8. And it says, Sixteen, one to eight. Then the word of the Lord came to me. You must not. Oh, that's uh, one thing. That's one of the reasons of his loneliness. Verses one to four. It says he, he should not marry and have no children. You know what? Why? He says in one to four. Then the word of the Lord came to me. You must not marry and have sons or daughters in this place. For this is what the Lord says about the sons and daughters born in this land and about the women who are their mothers and the men who are their fathers. They will die of deadly diseases. They will not be mourned nor buried, but will be like refuge lying on the ground. They will perish by sword and famine, and their dead bodies will become food for the birds of the air and beast of the earth. See the the Lord that was that the command of the Lord, you should not marry. Because what if you marry, these things will happen to your children, as it is happening to other people. You cannot mourn those your kids. You cannot bury them. This is sad. Kahit naman sa atin, napakahirap mangyari yun. Kahit na gusto mag-asawa, hindi ko pwede. At napakahirap na yung anak. Yung pamilya ay mawala, pero wala kang magawa. Not only that, the other reason, it says in 5 to 7, verses 5 and 7 of 16, chapter 16. No funeral service, no mourning or show of sympathy. Hindi ka pwedeng magpag funeral service. Hindi ka pwedeng mag morning Hindi ka pwedeng magpakita ng awa. No sympathy. Look what they say. For this is what the Lord says. Do not enter a house where there is a funeral service. Funeral meal. Do not go to mourn or show sympathy. Because I have withdrawn my blessing, my love, and my pity from these people, declares the Lord. Both high and low will die in this land, and they will not be buried or mourned, and no one will cut himself or shave his head for them. No one will offer food to comfort those who mourn for the dead, nor even for a father or a mother. Nor will anyone give them a drink to console them. Hindi ka pwedeng pumasok. Makipag-service, uh, you cannot mourn. Because what? All these people, what have done to the Lord? All the sins, the transgressions. And the Lord cannot forget it. Because He was forgotten by these people. Kahit na anong pakitang Pagmamahal ay hindi nila sinunod ang Panginoon. Not only he cannot marry or nor have children or not cannot enter the funeral service or show sympathy or mourning. He cannot even go to feasting. No eating, no drinking. No, he cannot enter a feast. Hindi ka pwede makipagsaya. Hindi ka pwede makipagkumain sa loob. Makipagmakasama. Sabi sa 8 to 10. And do not enter a house where there is feasting. And sit down. To eat and drink. For this is what the Lord Almighty. 
the God of Israel says, Before your eyes and your days, I will bring at the end of the sons of joy and gladness and to the voices of bride and bridegroom in this place. You cannot. Those are the four reasons why he is called the prophet of loneliness. The very reason why he was called weeping and prophet of holiness because of Israel's willful sins. The worship of other gods. Corruption. Jeremiah saw all this sinful things that being committed. Not only so that this, it is coming, but he saw the punishment of the Lord. The Lord reminded him of the punishment coming to them. But the Lord still showed his love to his people. With all the sufferings, persecutions, and willful sins, and worshiping other gods, The grace, mercy, and love of God will bring them back to Him. Ang ibig pamamal ng tao ng Dios kanya mga nilalang. That is what's happening to us right now. You can see what's going on around us in the world. There are so much sufferings. And this, like I said in the uh, Sunday school, is just a preview of what's going on, of what's coming. It is uh, a reminder for us reminding, reminding us of what is coming. That's why we have to be ready. Let's not forget what he has done for us to our Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ. Why is it so hard for men to see God's goodness and blessings? Bakit napakahirap makita ng tao ang kabutihan at pag-ibig ng Diyos? If we look back at the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve as a beautiful garden, with all kinds of animals, fruits, trees, flowers. They were all surrounded by beautiful things. But their focus is only one tree. The tree that brings damnation to this world. The tree that brings a thing. Now, up to now, we're living in sin. You know why? Because Satan is still there. He is very tricky. As we have to remember who our Savior is, what he has done for us. Remember all the blessings that have given to us. Since childhood, since the beginning, we were born. We see his goodness. What happened to that garden? God gave them an exit. That tree is their exit. Exit in the presence of God. That's how we choose a life to be without Christ in us. We know that Satan reigns and we see and embrace the pleasures of sins. We see, we hear the jokes of sins, and we smell, we feel and smell the aroma of sin. It captivates our whole being. 
without thinking of the consequences of our relationship with God. Our good reasoning would be, it's only one time. Some basis lang naman. Just to experience. And then we become used to it. And we become drugged to it. Naging addict na tayo. That is how Satan works. Patitikiman ka, unti-unti, hanggang sa masarapan ka. Then, it's hard to escape anymore. We are drugged to it. Nalasing na tayo sa kasalanan. Another example, we'll be going to church. We skip one Sunday, and then another Sunday, till we feel relaxed and get used to it. Our reasoning is, we had Zoom anyway. They have live streaming. We're still attending church. I'm more relaxed at home. And I don't bother anyone. Why do I need? I hear the message. I sing with them. But it's different because the presence of the Lord needs us to congregate, to be unity, to have unity with our brothers and sisters. You feel the fellowship of our brethren. If we love the Lord, we must go to church. We must embrace our fellowship with one another so we can feel the warmth. Hindi yung warm ng kumot ng ating yung yung init ng ating higaan habang tayo nakikinig. Hanggang nakikinig tayo, nakatulog na tayo. That's not what the Lord wants us to be. And another reasoning our prayer time with the Lord. We skip one prayer time or oh, I'll say, I'll just do it later on. And later on, till we forget about it. And we skip an air again another day. Doon tayo napapalayo sa Panginoon. The Lord becomes lonely. Sabagat na mapalayo ang kanyang mga anak. It is sad. Even for us who is there, all we can do is pray for them, for each one of us. Do not forget that we have a God that wants us to have, that wants to have a relationship with us. Any time of the day. Prophet Jeremiah is not a, a weapon prophet. He is not a prophet of loneliness. But also he became, he was once a reluctant prophet. Look at Jeremiah verses 1. 1 to 6. 1 verse, verses 6. Just one verse. Uh, 6. 6 to 10. It's much better. Jeremiah 1, 6 to, oh, six to 10. Oh. Yeah. Let's start with 4. Why well, became the reluctant prophet. The word of the Lord came to me saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. 
Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Here's what uh, Jeremiah answered. A sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak, and I am only a child. You remember who was the other one? Who almost said the same thing? Moses. You remember Moses? He said, I can I cannot speak. My I what I I taught her. Hindi malina ang aking pagsasalita. But the Lord said, it's not an excuse. I'll give you Aaron to be your helper. When we are called, if that calls anyone, the Lord will equip. Kaya sabi ni Parita, but the Lord said to me, do not say I am a child. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and will rescue you, says the Lord. Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, Now I have put my word in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to uproot them and tear down to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. See, the Lord, when he calls you, he will equip you. He will give us the strength. He will, the only requirement that the Lord wants us to be, to have, is obedience, a willing heart. We must have a willing heart. And the Lord will equip us. What it says here? Do not be afraid of them. For I am with you. And will rescue you. And do not But I, we do not have to be afraid. He will be with us. He will put the words in our mouth. Even in Galatians 1, 5 to 8. Let's see. Galatians 1, oh, 15 to 8. I mean. But when God who set me apart from birth and called me by his grace was pleased, to reveal his son in me so that I might preach him among the Gentiles. I do not consult any man, nor did I go up to Jerusalem to see those who were apostles before I was. But I went immediately into Arabia and later returned to the Damascus. Like the prophet Jeremiah, Apostle Paul, the Lord gave them the instructions. They directly, the instructions were given directly by, the, by God. They were equipped by the Lord. That's why we're not supposed to be afraid. Because anyone, anyone, young or old, like me, see, can be called and can be used. All the requirements that I said is we have to open our mind, our whole being, our heart to the Lord and to obey. It's never too late. Tabing us at John 14, 15 to 17. If you love me, obey my command. And I will ask the Father and he will give you Another counselor, the spirit of truth. I said, will be with you forever. God's words are command. It is not a suggestion.
all the Lord wants is an open heart for us to obey Him. A willing heart. And at the end, and my, I just finished with this, uh, I don't know, Jeremiah 15, 16, it says, uh, that actually that's our second verse for tonight. For everything that was written in the Bible, uh, no, Jeremiah 15, 16, when your words came, I ate them. They were my joy and my heart's delight. For I bear your name, O Lord God Almighty. The words of the Lord. He meditates on it. He eat it. He eat it. At yun ang kanyang kaligayahan. Every day in his life. Yun ang kanyang hinahanap. Every day. For his, he wants to give glory to God, to God Almighty. And that is what we want, he, he wants us to do every day in our life. As a new year, present to the Lord, let's start again. Let's start and do not break your promise, I promise. Have a good relationship with the Lord. What is five, fifteen, twenty minutes for the Lord? He is always waiting for us. And if you do this every day, there will be joy in our hearts always. Ano panapin natin yun? Kat panginoon at sumasa atin. And in the end, let's look at lamentation. Chapter 3, verses 22 to 25. I'll be reading from the uh, New Language Translation. Lamentation 3, 22 to 25. This also uh, from Jeremiah. The unfailing love of the Lord never ends. By His mercy, we have been kept from complete destruction. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin fresh each day. I say to myself, the Lord is my inheritance. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is wonderfully good to those who wait for him and seek him. See, uh, we have a faithful and merciful God. Kailangan tayo, we always said, to look forward to seek him every day. So we can feel his faithfulness and mercy. Because this is, if we do this every day, there's always that close relationship we have. It's always fresh, a new day, a fresh day to be with the Lord. And, and whatever we do on that day, will always be right if he is right. If he is the one leading us in our walk for the day, whatever our plan, whatever we go for that day, if we seek him first, it will always be right. God's faithfulness and mercy begins with the new day every day. For those who wait and seek Him every day, there is always a renewal for life. That is supposed to be a New Year's resolution. Seek Him day after day, and let's continue to seek him and serve him. Let's continue to be to be faithful to him 
for our God is a faithful God. And his love endureth forever. And his hope are that he have given to us to Christ Jesus is eternal. And he promised that he will never leave us nor forsake us wherever we are if he is in control of our life. Let's always look to him. Look for him every day. Especially early in the morning. Thank you so much. And I hope everyone will be encouraged for the food of the year. Seeking the Lord every day. Not a broken promise, but a continuing promise. Till he comes again. And we see him face to face with a greater show. There's anxiety. Oh, there's anxiety. There's a uh, willingly open our, uh, what do you call that? Our hearts are open, wide open to accept him. Able and ready to see him face to face. Thank you. And let's look to the Lord in prayer. Dear God, Heavenly Father, Thank you for your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave everything for us. Even though we are unfaithful, you know our hearts. You know the, the word that comes out of our mouth. That is not worthy, O oh God, to give us. And may your words that we have studied, how good you are, how faithful you are in the lives of Jeremiah and Apostle Paul, and the rest of the prophets and the rest of the disciples who gave everything that we may see your goodness, that we can share this love, your gospel to, to everyone who is lost. And I pray also, O oh God, for Pastor Alois and the group, including Eva, Elsa, and the Lingards is going there for the mission trip, provide their needs, give them comfort, give them the doctors and the dentists who's going to help them, especially their monetary needs of God. And bless, may more people will be blessed to come to you. Thank you, Father God. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Okay, we go to the second part. And who is going to lead?